channels. It'd be funny if we just started as right in the face of the lot. Mic's on. Five, four, three. Hey everyone, it's Walker and Nick at Full Spectrum Laser, and welcome to Laser Talk Live. That's right, we're back once again here live in Las Vegas, Nevada to answer all your laser questions, talk about some of the happenings, some tips and techniques and different things to get the most out of your laser system. So what do we got going on this week, Walker? So we're going to talk lenses, finally. Lenses. It yeah. seems like we've been trying to talk about lenses for a long time. Like lenses have been on the topic, it's been adjacent, but we've never really dove into the hows and whys of using the different lenses. I mean, we give away a lens every week. Yeah, yeah. And we and haven't talked about these things. No, so we so figured this week would be the week. Just go in depth with yeah, it. Yeah, we actually, this came from a great suggestion at Maker Faire. Uh, Brock and his son stopped by the booth and had a million great questions about the laser, its spot size capabilities. I'm telling you, these guys did their homework and uh, had a suggestion to do a couple examples of how the different lenses are used for different uh, applications. Uh, so which one did you want to talk about today first? So first I want to just do an overall and show what comes with the Muse and the lens kit. And uh, Charles has a great uh, picture for us. Right, so short video, I think. So your hobby laser and uh, your um, your Muse and hobby laser that comes with a standard two inch lens, right? Now this would be your uh, your universal lens, right? Like your uh, yeah, that's ideal for cutting uh, up to a quarter inch of material, and that's why it comes with your hobby machine. Right, so this is good for cutting and engraving, sort of like an all terrain uh, tire for your car, if you would. Yeah, yeah, it's it, it's overall good for that hobby machine. Now, as you can see from the uh, graphic there, the the size of the lens isn't necessarily based on the size, the actual size. Yeah, of it's, it's not really like a, the, the focal length. Yeah, it's right. the focal length itself. So your beam is coming into focus and then out of focus, right. and that's why you have a level of play. And with these different lenses, it changes that level of focus. And you see that five-inch lens uh, extender that actually will stretch your focus to go through thicker materials. So essentially, uh, the shorter your lens, the smaller uh, the size uh, of effective size the laser has on the material, and the longer lens, you have a deeper effective focal length. Yeah, you have a larger focal length and also spot size has changed. Right. So that five inch, that w now necessarily it doesn't cut thicker materials like say wood, Right, so you're not going to be able to put in a one-inch thick piece of, uh, of maple in there and yeah, expect yeah. to cut through or anything, no. But if you're doing something uh, like this, right, like we cut some of this foam uh, earlier this week, and I think Charles even has a uh, little video of this, but that's what you did with the, uh, the five-inch. So being able to cut through a thick foam like this for, you could use this for what kind of purposes, like pelican cases and different things like that, right? Yeah, yeah, all sorts of packaging cases, uh, prototyping. And just, it's a weird application, so. But it's a unique application because typically when you do this, you have to use a, a wire cutter, right? You yeah, you're using it by hand or uh, some sort of heating element to, you know, actually cut it. So the laser is actually an ideal um, tool for this application just because of the way you have to cut it anyway. Yeah, yeah. it is. So that's great for the uh, deep focal length. So um, I've used this uh, before for my camera gear inside my Pelican case. Mm -hmm. So um, everyone's camera is a little bit different, unique shape, and you can get like the outside shape of most Canons and Sonys and all your lenses online. And honestly, I just took that shape and put it into the system and cut out into those shapes for the uh, the lenses and camera. And now I'm the envy of all the uh, the uh, photographers in my little group going out to take pictures of the birds and wildlife here <laughs> in the mountains of Nevada. I'm sure. Um, <laughs> they do. They, lo they love my Pelican case. Okay, they do. Anyway, uh, so the deep lens is great for uh, foam like this. But um, what would we be using the uh, the smaller lens for? So we did an example earlier this week that we did it in the cut of the NBA Finals. Yeah. All right. So this is a great engraving right here, and this is on the standard uh, two inch lens, right? This is the two point five on a pro. Two point five. So this is the standard two point five on the pro, and there's a little bit of a difference you see here with the granulation of the wood, but. For all intents and purposes, try to get a little closer so you can get some more detail, but that's a pretty good engraving. Uh, what was the power and speed on this, Walker? So that was 100 speed and 16 power. All right, so now um, this is on the standard lens that comes with your machine now. Here we'll show you the engraving that Walker did with the 1.5 inch lens. And as you can see, huge difference. Uh, a lot more fidelity, a lot more detail, and we'll kind of do a side by side here if we back all up right. a little bit. but. Um, big difference in the two yeah. engravings. So if you're trying to get a little more detail out of your engraving, a little more, um, I guess a little more depth, a little more uh, fidelity out of your photo engravings, really consider uh, either entering our contest or just picking up one of our new 
um, or a new lens for your uh, for your muse or hobby system. Um, for people who do a lot of engraving and your business is doing a lot of personalized engraving, especially photo engravings, having the 1.5 inch lens is almost essential. Oh yeah, uh, and just you have to realize that since that focal length is shorter, that it's not super ideal for cutting thick materials. Absolutely. So. Um, what you do give up on your accuracy of engraving, you sacrifice in your ability to cut, yeah. which makes a lot of sense. Yeah, it does. Um, you will have a slight bend, uh, like bevel, so you can always tell that the focus, it's not in focus or it's coming out of focus through your cut because there's always going to be a slight bevel. Now there's a slight degree of bevel when you see this guy cut, but that's always going to happen because that travel you know, that length. Absolutely. But you're also cutting through, what is this, uh, inch and a half thick uh, foam? Yeah. So that little bit of bevel you see on the bottom, and it's barely noticeable on film there, but maybe with the vertical lines in the back, you can see there's just a little bit of sway at the end of that Just a line. little bit. And that's going to be increased if you tried to cut with a 2.5 inch lens. This stuff will cut. It's not that dense, but it will You'll be a bevel. A huge bevel, right. Yeah. So this, um, and that's probably something important to mention, right? Um, yeah. the, it's not that you're increasing the laser's power at all with mm -hmm. the lens. You're just distributing uh, the effectiveness of the beam over a larger area. It's so like Walker said, if this was cut on the 2.5, it would look a lot more like this, more yeah, of the hourglass shape, because it would be very obvious uh, that it'd be about a quarter of an inch in the middle would be straight. Then everything above and below it would be beveling out exponentially, right? Yeah, yeah. It, it, as it comes out of focus, it's really it's coming in focus and then out, of focus, out of focus like, a, like an, an hourglass. Hour yeah. yeah. So that will be extremely beveled if you use that same uh, 2.5 inch lens. No. Oh, we got a couple questions coming live from Facebook. Um, looks like Steve Hasselbrook. Good to have you back on uh, up, watching Steve? the show. What's up, Steve? Uh, was the DPI the same on both your pictures? Absolutely. All yeah. the settings were identical. Power, speed, and DPI. Walker will hold them up again here for you to see. Um, same exact uh, exactly. power speed and obviously a big difference on the fidelity. Now these are the exact same piece of wood, uh, literally from the same piece of wood, um, both uh, Romark hardwood collection, uh, the maple edition that they have, uh, which is a great three ply um, uh, piece of hobby board. But the I think the biggest difference is how much effective, like the, the density of effectiveness that the shorter um, the shorter lens has. Yeah, the, these were done with as little variable as possible and the right. same area of the bed in, you know, same power, same speed, same DPI, just different lens. Literally, I started the job, ended the job, and then just switched out the lens, didn't move anything except for the wood, you know, that new piece of wood, so. This is a great question for you, actually, Walker, coming from Megan Shannon Habian. Hello, um, Megan. Thanks for tuning in again. Um, on Facebook, can you, oh, sorry, it's from Facebook. Can you use the five inch lens to engrave deeper items like the inside of a glass? That's a great question. Yes. <laughs> so if you have a wood bowl or something like that that you want to engrave the inside, you have a larger focus range, so mm -hmm. you can do, you know, something on the bottom of that bowl. But there's two things to consider with that as well. Uh, with that deeper focal length, uh, you'll have slightly less fidelity with mm -hmm. your engraving, so you won't, you'll have it in, uh, we wouldn't suggest doing photo engravings Definitely or anything yeah. with the five inch, uh, but you could do solid fill engravings uh, very effectively. Just know that you'll have to increase your power a little bit to get the same effectiveness uh, with the five inch lens as you would with your 2.5. Yeah, that focus, that, that beam size is a lot larger. I would suggest if you're doing that with the 5 inch lens, always using 500 dpi as it'll give you the most fill. Um, actually, the different uh, lens variables is actually the great time to explore your dpi settings, which is probably something that's uh, good to talk about. Um, with the 2.5 inch lens, the spot size you have uh, with your laser is actually just a little bit thicker than a line of resolution in 500 dpi um, uh, laser engraving. So you're getting just a little bit. Um, very, very little bit of overlap as the laser engraves. So you're getting a very, very solid fill um, as you're engraving, and that's why your photos look best at uh, 500 dpi. Um, with the 1.5 inch lens, though, you can actually get a little bit more out of your dpi going up to 500 and 1,000, though, can't you? Yeah, yeah. It, it actually would look a lot better in 1,000 dpi in comparison to a standard lens. Absolutely. And this uh, is especially for um, solid fill engravings with a lot of detail. So if you had a very intricate uh, lace pattern or inlay or uh, corner scroll work that had a lot of very intricate engravings, um, you're going to get much, much more out of your 1.5 inch lens. Yeah, you'll see like a lot of scroll actually comes to a real thin 
point, and yep. if you're running like a standard lens and 250 DPI, you'll see some of those thin parts of maybe that scroll work disappear. Absolutely. Because it's not penetrating. So that 1.5 inch lens will get those little thin areas. That's great. I hope that answered <laughs> your question. <I> <laughs> That's great. That's great, yeah. <coughs> um, with the, um, I guess another thing to talk about is what comes with a lens kit, right? So yeah. when you order or let's say you win a weekly contest, which all you have to do is post one of your uh, projects and use the hashtag FSL weekly contest to enter, uh, you'll get one of these lens kits. Now inside this lens kit comes some very, very basic things. Now you'll have a, uh, a new nose. Now why do you have a new uh, nozzle like this, Walker? So that's going to change your focus and your air, the way the air comes out because you will have a different focus billet. Okay, so then you also get a lens, which is inside here, which we should have probably taken off the tape before, but I was not thinking. So appreciate your patience as we do a f real actual unboxing here. Yeah. Of this. this is as uh, legit as it gets, the actual tape coming off the side. <laughs> it's fun so to watch. It's, it is fun to watch. I bet this is super entertaining. Oh, uh, so yeah. inside, you'll have a lens that's uh, actually really well protected in a nice wrap. Uh, and this will slide right back into the same slide that's already available, uh, already right there on your um, the head of your Muse. And if you look really closely into this, you can see the reflection of us in the monitor behind watching our camera us. and watching us. This is the infinite mirror. Um, <laughs> so uh, this slides right back in to replace on your Muse, and <coughs> then you'll just um, unscrew the nozzle and replace that as well, and that is just about it to switch over, right? Yeah. It's pretty easy. How long does it take uh, typically to swap out uh, one lens for another? Well, honestly, it's really fast with the hobby machine. You have that uh, slider that just pops in and out, which is very cool, and you have the different focus billet. It is. It is a little longer for a pro. So pro, you actually have to disassemble a laser head, and then there's a tool that comes with the machine that you unscrew. It's uh, a collar screw, and then you throw in the new lens. Always make sure that the convex side is up. Absolutely. Now, we featured that tool when we did the uh, maintenance on the uh, uh, Pro Series. Yeah, a couple weeks back we did that. So if you guys want to check out that video, that will be up here. Uh, we will link that right up over yeah. top of uh, Walker's head there. So, no. oh, one thing I wanted to say is with the 5-inch lens, mm -hmm. with a Pro, you have to take a, a very close look at it because it's easy for the normal lenses. You'll see that convex side and know which side to put it in. But with the 5-inch, you have to really look at it. And if you just installed the 5-inch, lens and you're like whoa this thing's not cutting right don't think it's your alignment instantly flip that lens around that's probably what it is absolutely now with the um, different lens kits you actually get a new focus billet uh, now why is that important to keep in mind so that's going to change your focus length and that's going to be your proper focus length for that new nozzle and your uh, new lens there it is so that is the highs and lows, what's, whys, and hows of the lens kit replacements for Muse and Hobby. Hope that helped out uh, with some of your decision making and hopefully maybe thinking about expanding your capabilities of your Muse or maybe just uh, trying to play around a little bit with uh, different things you can do. Honestly, with that five inch lens being able to engrave inside of different objects and getting a little bit more out of your um, uh, riser and rotary combo. It's almost an essential accessory when you get a riser rotary to get yourself a five inch lens with it. It'll just save a lot of time um, and effort uh, when it comes to swapping out uh, lenses going back and forth. But like I said, if you had to swap out lenses and you're going back and forth, it's, it's really quick and easy to do. It's usually under a minute to have one in and swap another one back out. So um, I don't think that's anything to defer. I think the one thing that people get intimidated with uh, with the different lens options is they're not sure if their application is correct or worthy of the different lens. Mm -hmm. For the most part, your 2.5 inch lens will do everything you'd want. Um, it's really if you're looking for a little bit more out of photo engraving, if you're looking mm -hmm. for a little bit more detail on engraving, or like I said, you had very specific applications where cutting foam was going to be a core part of your business, you actually probably want to get a 5 inch lens to be able to handle that specific application. So. As you go beyond a hobbyist and you're going to specific application in the prosumer market and your laser's really starting to make money for you, investing a little bit into broadening the um, capabilities of your laser is actually uh, a pretty easy way to really offer more um, capabilities for your service, whether it be an add-on to your business or you're running just an independent laser business. I definitely think you hit it on the head when you said it's all application, or if you just want to play around and you want to, you know, figure some stuff out, playing with that 5-inch or that 1.5, and uh, 
if you don't want to buy it, you can always win the weekly contest. And speaking of weekly contest, I guess we'll jump to the weekly contest winner real quick because it's a really cool story. Um, they are Anderson Country Corner. They uh, make a bunch of great uh, work now. This is uh, Mark, uh, sorry, Mary and Jeff. Um, they are up in uh, Minnesota and they Don't actually have know. a. Uh, had a tornado that struck a hundred year old barn. I think we actually have a photo of it from their page right here. So they had this hundred year old barn struck by a tornado. What do you do with all this material? I'll tell you what you do. You get a laser and you start a laser engraving business using all this awesome old barn wood. And that photo uh, that we posted just a moment ago was a <coughs> awesome Memorial Day uh, photo that they engraved. Charles, if you wouldn't mind throwing that uh, what back <coughs> real quick. Appreciate it, man. Um, really great Memorial Day offering there with the flag in the background. As you can see, they used actually a really great technique that uh, we'll be featuring um, next week as one of our examples of engraving. That's um, relief engraving. So what they did is they left the letters white. If you see, um, all gave some, some gave all. Remember them this Memorial Day. Great message, but all those letters in the design are white. And then the image behind them um, was in a grayscale that um, exactly, it made the letters feel like they were raised off uh, the image. Now, this is a great effect you can do with deep engraving. Um, and like I said, we'll talk about this a little bit more next week as uh, an application uh, for your laser. Uh, again, congratulations to Jeff and Mary. Woo! 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 Um, and uh, again, uh, you can contact your sales rep or we'll reach out to you. Uh, within the week about how to claim your prize, which again, if you're interested in winning the weekly contest, you can get one of these lens kits right here uh, by just posting a photo and using the hashtag FSL weekly contest. Uh, you can either get one of the lens kits or $250 towards um, you know, a purchase, uh, either an accessory, maybe you need some more um, uh, replacement for your f uh, exhaust, uh, what do you call it? <laughs> fume extractor. Uh, fume extra yeah. Brain's all in there today. Looks like we got a request from Jeanette Dezel. Uh, I hope I said that correct, Jeanette. Uh, please tell my husband, John, that he has my permission to order one of your systems. John. Well, John, here's from the laser experts at Full Spectrum Laser. You have our full permission, and it looks like your wife's permission as well, to order one of our laser systems. I'd suggest a Pro 24. Yeah, yeah. They're $1,000 off right $1, now. $1,000 off right now. Just going to figure we'd slide that in. Our most popular Pro Series thousand dollars off it's almost like a Christmas in July sale it's a yeah it's a pretty good deal it's the easiest cheapest way to get into a 90 watt system um, if you're looking for that uh, if you're looking for Muse or something in the hobby range uh, John make sure you call into the sales rep and see what deals we have going on and get the best rate available you have our permission you have our permission um, it's kind of it kind of felt nice to be Almost like we were, um, I don't know, like sworn knights or something. Like yeah. We could, we could now we do could official things. I need a bow or curtsy. <laughs> so we have a couple exciting things coming up where um, some of the upgrades that are being pushed and available for the Pro Series are now starting to become available. So if you are interested in using RE3 or upgrading your software on your Pro Series machine, that's any Pro Series sold at any time, make sure you give us a call or send a email to sales at fullspectrumlaser.com or sales at fslaser.com um, and we'll connect with you immediately. That upgrade kit's gonna be available here in the next couple of, uh, at least actually we'll be shipping in the next couple of weeks. So I think we can start taking orders here immediately. We'll have some information on that coming out this week. Uh, we'll actually have a nice little uh, release and landing page for you guys to uh, go and visit by the time this is posted on YouTube. So check for that down below in the description below on YouTube. If you're checking out on Facebook, just look at our page. I'm sure it was posted um, either today or a day in the past. Uh, who knows when you're watching this, if you're not watching live. Years later. Uh, years later, it could be 2020 right uh -huh. now. You just wanted to know about different lenses. Yeah. Um, so it looks like we have another question coming in from the Book of Faces. Um, Let's see if we can read this. Stephen from Aurora is asking, I currently have my acrylic material stored in my garage, uh, which can heat up to 100 degrees in the summer. What temperature is it safe to store acrylic at? So I would say store acrylic at room temperature Absolutely. because it, it, what is it? Heating like at 200 Fahrenheit, it'll start to mold uh, and bend and twist. But even at lower temperatures, as, as it sits there longer and longer and longer, it's slowly, you know, like everything's technically slow liquids, right? Absolutely. So it will start bending and twisting. So we How always. How was that? Yeah. Okay. So always store them flat and uh, in room temperatures. Just bring them inside the house. 
Uh, I get lazy and leave them in the garage and they just get scratched up anyways. Absolutely. Uh, material is actually an important thing to keep uh, mindful of when you're storing it, especially um, wood. Uh, in the summertime, as we're coming into it, there'll be much more moisture in the air, uh, much more variance in the heat of the day to the coolness of the night. So make sure you're treating your material good and keeping it at room temperature, laying it flat. And um, a little secret you can do, especially with the um, wood, if your wood does get a little skewed, go out there with a spray bottle, spray it down with a, not much, a little bit of water just so it has a little bit of moisture to it and then lay some flat heavy things on it and let it dry out. It'll dry back flat as well. It wasn't always flat. Um, it was made flat. So know that um, it's a natural thing that happens with wood. That's something you can't really avoid. And it doesn't matter if you get the best wood from, uh, um, you know, uh, Craftsman Wood or if you get, you know, Home Depot's special. Um, it's still going to be, you know, victim to the, uh, the different te temperature and humidity effects that happen to organic material like that. Yeah, definitely weigh it down on the edges and just make sure those are flat and then the rest of it will become flat. Absolutely. And if you do put something on top of it, make sure it's porous and breathable because you could get mildew building on that wood. Absolutely. Don't put flat heavy objects on top of damp wood where moisture can just be trapped and become mildew. Absolutely. Uh, be smart about it. Use uh, heavy objects, that, like you said, breathable or just on the corners. Yeah, uh, I'm, yeah. I'm talking from experience. Yeah, I've done the same thing. Um, happened actually more times than I'd like to admit. Because um, it, it's so addicting just to spray the bottle down and it happens so quick with the flattening and you actually kind of see it uh, and you get a little impatient sometimes. You know, um, plop yeah, something on there. Yeah. Um, so uh, I guess along with the material uh, maker kits are being back added into the Muse and Hobby series. Uh, so if you've ordered one recently, that's coming out. If you didn't get one when you ordered your... Um, Muse, not to worry, those are coming in the mail directly from Romark, so they're shipping out to um, all of our different uh, Muse and Hobby lasers, so if you didn't get your uh, maker kit in there, not to worry, uh, it'll be coming uh, in the mail as a little surprise, a little added surprise uh, after the fact. Um, what else do we have? Oh, it's big great. thing happening here in Las Vegas tonight. I want to wish a very good luck to the Las Vegas Golden Knights, who have Game 2 of the Stanley Cup playoffs tonight. Uh, they were victorious in game one, so if you are anywhere in the Las Vegas region, or if you were unaware that Las Vegas is now a hockey town, um, we were... Are we? I think we are. I think I, if you're in the Stanley Cup Finals, you're Go outside and tell me that. Um, yeah, it's already like 110 degrees today. It was, yeah. it was, it was hot today. Already too warm. Um, so warm. So go Knights go. Um, if you have a time away from the, <laughs> uh, from the game, uh, come by and check out our survey. we got a link down below. Uh, give us a few minutes of your time. Let us know what we're doing well, what we can do a little better at. We always appreciate hearing from you. So many things come from this survey, so many improvements, so many different uh, things that uh, kind of get developed from a suggestion, be it um, you know, bottom-up engraving, middle-out engraving, uh, different things like that. Uh, so give us a minute and give us your bright ideas and ways we can be better on the survey. Looks like we have a question live on Facebook from Jim, Jim. Robinson. Uh, when will the upgraded Muse be available? So the upgraded Muse is still in development and we'll have details about that coming very soon, um, but uh, nothing on that solid to uh, pass just yet. Jim also said he sent a project and he'd like to see us build it. Ooh, Jim sent, hey guys, I sent you a project I would like to see you build. Uh, Jim, where'd you send that project? Uh, uh, we'd love to take a look and uh, give it a build. Uh, yes, sounds fun. Um, do focus, it uh, looks like Derek is asking, do the focus lenses need to be cleaned? Oh, I think we answered that, didn't we? Sorry about that. Um, the focus lenses do need to be cleaned. Actually, you should always clean your optics every time you use your machine. If you want one thing to increase the length and the usability of your machine, keep your lens clean, keep your optics clean, because once you have that residue burnt onto the optics, there's no, there's no back turning back. That. There's no, there's no special sauce to coming off. There's no easy off oven cleaner uh, way to get it clean. Like that's that's going to be on there, which is really you're just going to deal with. Um, you know, decreased efficiency until it's to the point where you have to replace the lens, which is not the most cost efficient thing to replace. So be mindful of it. It's kind of like not changing the oil in your car. Like yeah. change the oil, go get an oil change. Like Speaking of. You need an oil change? Yeah, cool. yeah. I need an oil change too. I just hit my mark. Uh, my little car has got a cute, neat little light now though where it mm. says, hey, you kind of need an oil change. Yeah, which yeah, mine says that too, uh, but it's been like two months. Oh. Two months of blinking at you, yeah. Um, 
speaking of the alert sensors, uh, be sure if you're having problems with your laser firing, if you're having problems with your laser operating, check out our blog uh, that Scott's written up. Uh, we'll have a link down below as well. Uh, you can quickly check out um, what we consider like low-hanging fruit as far as issues. It, maybe it's your lid's not uh, shut or the lid sensor isn't reading, uh, your water isn't pumping through. Um, it could be a number of little things that's causing your um, laser not to fire. If you're a, a hobby user or a pro series user, it could just be your uh, machine needs to be registered. So make sure you check out that blog for those type of answers. Looks like uh, Steve Hasabrook has one more question coming from Facebook. So on the lenses, I get the fo focal length and shape, but why is the qualifier of the raster better on the 1.5? Is the beam smaller? Uh, that's exactly right, Steve. The spot size of the beam is smaller. So you're basically carving with a smaller knife as you do the engraving. It's kind of, I think, the most evident as you look in the um, hair on uh, Mr. Steph Curry there. Um, it could kind of get washed and blown out there. And then with the same settings, you actually get a lot of fidelity and detail. I think it's back up just a touch so back it comes into focus. Up, yeah. back up. Probably back even up. more apparent there on the letters of the last name and the NBA logo because those are super crisp on yeah. this one. Um, I think that's the thing I noticed the most on the focal length uh, change is when you're doing uh, sharp lines, the crispness of those lines is largely noticeable with the uh, 1.5 lens over the 2.5. Yeah, if we want to show that image again, Charles, with the, uh, the penny for oh comparison, yeah. we'll show that one more time. So those are the two different lenses. And, um, now the top one's got a, a bit of burned off. So yeah, it's a li it was a little strong, but so it's still like but that. But the same power, right? Yeah, yeah. So that, um, what was I going to tell you about this? It's really small. It's right. a four-point so, font. Um, and which is about the same size font, it looks like, as Liberty on the size of the penny. So if you had a pen in your pocket and pull it out, that's probably the biggest difference there. On a small detail engraving, being able to do small letters is ideal with a 1.5 lens. And you'd probably get a better result with the default lens if it wasn't wood. Th that was very soft wood. V very soft wood. And, and if you bump that size up, you know, 20%, you probably get a little bit better results. But mm -hmm. uh, the thing to consider with that, um, with the smallness is the beam being a smaller size, it's also not affecting the area around it. So the larger beam size is also now overlapping a bit. So as it did those two L's on full, if you notice, there's a lot of space in between the two L's on the 1.5 inch run. But up above, those L's are basically touching. Yeah, yeah. yeah that, it's that larger spot size is very apparent at that scale. Absolutely, and again, that is a penny uh, that's just barely stuck on the side of the frame there. So if you look at the size of Liberty written, uh, the full spectrum laser font there is about the same size as the word Liberty on a penny. So uh, as far as using two different lenses, that's probably the best example. That was a good job of pulling that Thank photo. You. I, uh, I actually ran the job, and it was so small I didn't think it ran. Like I went back to the laser, and I was like, where it? Oh, oh. it's so small. <laughs> it was crazy. Uh, Julio is asking from uh, Costa Mesa, can a laser cutter engrave on stone? Yes, it can. We're going to prove do it. it. We'll do it Thursday. Thursday, in the cut. Uh, we always do live uh, laser engravings and cuts uh, on our off days when we're not doing live videos. So on Tuesdays and Thursdays, uh, you've probably seen it in our Facebook feed before. We just turn the machine on and let you see what happens live, unadulterated, uncut. Uh, here's the machine uh, operating and using a job. So we try to switch up different applications, different types of lenses, different types of machines. You can see examples on our fiber lasers, on our pro series machines, and on our hobby series machines. So you can go back and check out those in the cut videos that we have uh, available on YouTube, which you can go check out in the link above mm -hmm. Walker said right now, or you can check out um, on our Facebook as well if you're watching live or on a repeat here on the Book of Faces. One more question coming in from that Book of Faces. Is the H-Series capable of cutting three millimeter carbon fiber sheet? No. Why? <coughs> so the resin inside of carbon fiber does not cut well. Okay. It so resin just goops up and it just does not cut well. So if he had a 90 watt laser, would he be able to cut three millimeter carbon fiber? It will not be a nice cut. There's, there's a uh, <coughs> alternatives to carbon fiber that you can actually cut and it's just almost as strong uh, but it's an alternative to it that does cut well because it's not resin based. Carbon fiber is just woven material and that stuff cuts fine without the resin but once you introduce the resin and harden it that does not cut well. Right so if you're understanding that that fiber that's holding it together is a lot like MDF the same problem you have with MDF in that the glue holds together the sawdust. 
with the carbon fiber, it's like you said, a bunch of fibers being uh, woven together and then held by uh, basically an epoxy resin, right? Yeah, which is essentially really hard glue. Right. And that glue just does not cut well. Right. It's extremely light and works well. And uh, if you wanted to engrave or mark it, uh, you can do great things with that. But the cut is not clean, would probably be the best way to put it. Yeah. Uh, not as bad as polycarbonate, but it does not cut well. Right. Um, and if you want a, what's that type of material, if you want to give a suggestion for the altar? Do you know it offhand? Uh, no, but they use it in aerospace all the time, like uh, that type of engineering. If you look up just alternatives to carbon fiber, uh, less resin. I think that question came from uh, a uh, Facebook uh, question when I asked about, uh, I think Richard has a hobby with model planes. So mm. I think he's trying to cut small parts for model planes to save on weight uh, when he's building those. I don't know if you've seen some of those jets, and they even have 747s that are massively in size, like six foot long, take off. Oh, yeah, so yeah. It's, yeah. It's, it's incredible. So I like watching uh, them crash. Yeah, that's, uh, well they, that's mostly how they land. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Most of them don't land too, too, too smooth. Uh, so if you're a hobbyist out there, uh, even using a, you know, for model airplanes, a laser is a great application tool for uh, getting a little bit more out of... Uh, Cutting into what is it? Um, not birch, but it's the um, the balsa. The balsa wood. Balsa the cuts the like nothing. Oh, it's so if you want an easy wood to cut or a great wood to pick up to do a bunch of easy cuts that just cut through butter, balsa is terrific. What's a good suggestion for some good engravings? Like <coughs> if uh, like we know this is from Romark and this has a good engraving, but let's say you're going to go to uh, Home Depot right now, and that's mm -hmm. the only thing that's close to you, and you wanted to get the best piece of wood to do a, s a slick engraving that you could also cut on uh, the means. What would you pick up? So you want to cut and engrave it. Mm -hmm. um, I would probably do a birch. That's probably going to be your cheapest option. If they don't, they do also have a what nice a poplar. Yeah, I think poplar is probably the best option because you can get a hardwood of that, which doesn't have any ply, uh, has really great grains in it, but nothing too heavy. Where engravings still look really good on it, mm -hmm. and nothing like you still get that wood look, but there's not so much of it that it takes away. Like I think a little it's bit of yeah, it. It's very subtle. Yeah, absolutely. A little bit on here. I am not. Like, I, I would love this in a different way, but for a photo engraving, the grain on this piece of wood actually took away a little bit yeah, from that line see that you see across. So, um, I mean, no fault of the wood. Honestly, just on the other side is, <laughs> is, a, perfect, uh, yeah. is a perfect section. So it's kind of hit or miss uh, with this. You can kind of look sometimes, but uh, with this one, you don't really notice it too much uh, yeah. with the 1.5, to be honest with you. Now, is this a better piece of wood or better section of wood? Uh, maybe, um, but with the poplar, you don't have um, really any of that suggestion. So, are there better options to order online and get something? But if you were just headed to Home Depot or Lowe's, uh, go back to the cabinetry section, or they have the specialized wood, uh, mm -hmm. not like the lumber section, back where they have like cabinet wood and uh, what else is back there? All kinds of specialty wood, like corner and trim, pieces, corn yeah. pieces, and moldings. dowels, moldings, things like that. Go back there and look for a piece of poplar. Uh, you'll usually find it uh, eight inch wide by you know a couple feet long. Sometimes you have to cut it down to be able to fit into the machine, but uh, Home Depot and Lowe's will do that for you for free. So yeah, if you're doing something like that, like this, that's ideal because it doesn't need any strength. Like plywood, if you need something and you're building some sort of notch project, which yeah. I always think about, plywood's good. A lot Absolutely. of people hate plywood, but it's built for strength. Absolutely. Well, I think that's uh, that might be the whole show. I think we might have just, just knocked it out. Just knocked it right out of the park with all this information. So we talked about lenses. We talked about the upgrade for pros. We talked about how you can win your own lens. And uh, I think that's all we had on the on the docket. We're good. So what are we doing on Friday for the one hour build? So we, I think it was your suggestion. We're gonna do uh, cooler labels. Yeah. So <laughs> my suggestion, I think. So Walker <laughs> had this big problem, and he went yeah. to a barbecue on Saturday for Memorial Day, and there was 10 coolers, and all Walker wanted was a water. Mm -hmm. But every cooler he opened up, there was a bunch of beer or a bunch of sodas or a bunch of Capri Suns for the kids, and he mm -hmm. couldn't find the cooler with the water. So let's label them. So Walker's going to make some really interesting and cool and just amazing <laughs> water cooler oh. and different cooler labels so that when you're going camping or have a backyard uh, feast planned, everyone will know what's inside of that cooler. So look out for that Friday. And then we're doing stones, right, tomorrow for yeah. In the Cut? We're going to engrave some stones tomorrow. And uh, yeah, I, I want to make a little sunglasses you just put on the cooler to make it even cooler. You know? A cooler cooler? Yeah. That's pretty cool. <laughs> Um, tomorrow's in the cut's kind of neat because uh, with the wishing stones, uh, you can go to the um, dollar store and get a bag of 
of stones, and then oh, yeah. what do you plan on doing it? Putting a wish on it, right? Yeah, we'll put a wish on it, or put just wish, or you know, some sort of hopeful thing that somebody can throw across and make a wish. Absolutely. So you can think someone can have it as a skipping stone to go make a wish, or a pocket stone that you can just put in your pocket as a easy reminder to be kind, or uh, I don't know, nicer to your employees, or maybe not throw people under the bus for having ideas like cooler labels. <laughs> Friend, <coughs> okay. we'll we'll have a we'll have a better project next week. Walker's yeah. gonna come up with it, and actually, we have a uh, challenge project. It looks like that we have to go uh, dig out. Look, uh, looks like Don Reese wants to ask a quick question before we get out of here. Uh, most all big box hardware stores can order five by five sheets of Baltic or Russian birch. Both of these cut and engrave well on your machines. They absolutely do. So um, those five by five sheets, they also have like the six by and the twelve by twelves. Those are available at anywhere from Walmart to uh, Michael's, uh, Joann's, Hobby Lobby. You can always go in and find those uh, pieces of birch there as well, absolutely. If you're looking for the best place to order online, we suggest going to Johnson Plastics Plus. And if you actually go to John, uh, jppplus.com backslash FSL, you'll get a 10% off discount for being a, a full spectrum laser uh, customer. Let's get some. Let's, let's get some. Yeah. yeah. All right, so uh, Steve has one more question. Aspen is really good too, really white and clear. Aspen is a great, what's not uh, really available all over the U.S. is uh, as it is uh, in northern and uh, mountain uh, areas, but Aspen is a beautiful wood to engrave on. Really subtle grains and the color just, get, you get such a good pop with the engraving because you're able to put such a dark mark on the wood. I haven't used Aspen in a long time. It's very beautiful. Now, another easy way to get um, wood if you're looking to get it what we call on the cheap Go and savage off of some pallets. Uh, pallet wood is great for engraving on because it's very soft. Um, you can sand it down so it has a nice smooth finish. And being able to do test or you know just have something to quote unquote play around with and be able to kind of you know figure out your machine and figure out like what's the best practices for editing your photos and you know power and speed settings. Like that's a great uh, source for what we'd call play wood, just to kind of do some simple engravings on. Or you can wait for a tor tornado to take down your barn and then you use all the reclaimed wood. There you go. I, I mean, probably not best for the community. All these tornadoes. And yeah. Definitely not good for the barns. But Re if you happen to be in an area and there happens to be a tornado, there happens to be <coughs> barn wood. Yeah. Go check with the farmers first, but as soon as they say it's okay, by all means, help yourself yeah. to helping them out with some of that. Reclaimed the wood's really hot right now. It actually is. Um, what's funny is as I was driving home to my little town in Michigan, I drove by all these uh, barns that are still standing, and all I thought was, wow, what could I do with that entire barn full of wood? And it's become so popular in these, um, like I come from a very uh, dairy-rich region. We have a ton of dairy farms, so there's a ton of barns for hay and the cows. All these old barns are actually being bought by people who just want the reclaimed barn wood and put it as yeah. uh, in, uh, like use it for interior decorating and projects like we saw um, the winners of this week's contest do. Yeah, I, I took tons of barn wood and I just put it on the walls of my house. Yeah, it's a great, great thing. Um, uh, and that's probably another easy thing to talk about as far as material, like uh, sites like OfferUp and Craigslist always have things that people are just trying to get rid of. Oh yeah. Be it an old coffee table, an old chair set, um, old headrests, um, anything. Um, grab that up, engrave it, upscale it. That's a great way to use your laser and get more out of um, you know, the product that you've spent a lot of money on. Especially if you've got a ProSeries machine, there's a lot of things you can put inside. You can even think about if you have a powder coating business and y what you did is put powder coating on rims and other things the best thing to take off a powder coating and put a neat engraving on it is a laser system. So if you can imagine if you powder coated some rims and then had the center cap that covered up the lugs and put the center cap inside the laser and did some engravings on that, you could do some really cool custom work, whether it be customized for the vehicle, putting the, you know, the initials of the car owners on it or just the logo of the car that it's being put on right on the hub is an easy way to upsell customers. And if you think about it, that's a $100 service you could add to you could probably charge $100 per wheel for that service and pay for the laser in, you know, 10 installs. Uh, then you can powder coat it again and, and just have, like, an awesome relief, you know? Ooh, yeah. So, I cool. mean, then you th start thinking artistically, multiple layers of powder coating with multiple layers of engraving. engraving. Ooh. Now you're starting to think really, really outside the box. And, I mean, at that point, you could even start doing kiss cutting and kiss engraving where you're just engraving past certain levels of the powder coating where perhaps you prelay three or four coats of powder coating and then do an engraving that kind of
kind of brings out all three layers. That would be crazy. Yeah, if you can imagine a gradient across the solid fill engraving of like the letter S, and then as the gradient picks up the different levels and different layers and engraving, have that S have all the different colors. It can go a long, long yeah. ways with it. Yeah, Walker's getting pretty excited about it. I think <laughs> he's going to go home and paint something and do some, <laughs> do some engravings. Um, any more questions from uh, the internet, Scott? So it looks like I sent it to uh, Jim. Sent it to Walker on Facebook. Walker will check his Facebook account. He's not the best at checking in on that. Uh, we had a long weekend, and when we got back, we just had a bunch of stuff to catch up on. So Walker will jump on Facebook today and see what you sent, Jim. And we will, at the very least, talk about it next week. Uh, if not, have it built. Yeah, yeah, all I right. want to. All right. Well, I think that's all we got for this week, guys. Uh, again, we'll be on Friday for a one-hour build with Walker. He'll be making some very cool. Cooler labels. Super cool. He's very excited about it. Um, if you got an idea for next week's project or any other projects like Jim had, be sure to send it in. Um, fill out a survey, enter a contest, and as always, check out our free projects at laser101.fslaser.com. Until next week, I'm Nick. That's Walker. Keep making.